Welcome to Rogue Logic. This is the way. Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope that everyone is having a great day here. Uh, as you can see, Basil is assisting me today. And um, okay, I'm going to get right to what uh, the matter at hand is right after I do say, if you could, please like and subscribe and hit notifications so you know when I have new content. It would really help a lot, and I would really appreciate it. So, for today, uh, the discussion is a couple days behind for me. I unfortunately had food poisoning, and uh, that was unpleasant. So, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, I really wish I were talking about something else, but I can't, I just can't let this whole thing go by. So, of course... What I'm going to start with is this tweet right here, which I will leave up for the remainder of the video. And um, her national divorce idea. She's bloody crazy. Yes, I agree. It's, uh, it's her trying to not get into trouble. Uh, but so far I've seen that although she has done that... Um, and I think she's getting a little bit of advisement to do that. I, I think she's straying right off into her normal territory again anyway. But anyway, so her first tweet that dealt with this, and uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to read this through and, uh, and, and really... All right, so here, here we have it. We need a national divorce. So, in other words, this is her code word for she wants the United States of America to no longer be the United States of America, whether it be through legislation or, uh, although she claims not, civil war. So, uh, she goes on to say, we need to separate by red states and blue states, completely not something that Number one, logistically not going to work. Number two, the time it would take. Uh, this, this, this will play into a, my point later about her inability to understand um, basically the way the government works. And then, of course, and shrink the federal government. Now, everyone has a different viewpoint on that. That's fine. Whether you think there should be more centralized government or less, still doesn't call for sedition, doesn't call for civil war, doesn't call for disbanding the United States of America. Here's my favorite part. Everyone I talk to says this. Well, Marge, I don't know who you're talking to. Uh, maybe yourself, maybe some of the other right-wing lunatics that are Christian nationalists who have decided that they speak for everyone. Um, but no, everyone does not say this, okay? So I don't know who you're speaking for, but it isn't everyone. And then, of course, to lay into someone, because this is, this is what the issue is, from the sick and disgusting woke culture issues shoved down our throats to the Democrats' traitorous America last policies, we are done. My first question is, who is we? All right, now, you have to take into account that who Marjorie Taylor Greene is speaking for basically is Christian nationalist, white-wing, theocratic lunatics and Nazis. That's, that's who she actually is speaking for. This is what this woman believes. But she's decided that she's speaking for 70 plus percent of America, and I'll tell you why, because she's talking about Christians, all right? Now, uh, I'm going to put this in the description below. This is a religious landscape study, so it's basically just breaking down the um, religion and lack thereof or types of religion in the United States. So Christians in general in the United States make up 70.6% percent of the country. So yes, the majority is Christian. Now, that 
is a very loose term. That means very devout Christians, people who just identify as Christian, and everything in between, all the different denominations, everything. So Marjorie Taylor Greene has decided that she speaks for all of you, okay? So now that, that gets broken down. Evangelical Protestants make up 25.4%. Uh, mainline Protestant make up 14.7%. Um, historically Black Protestant make up 65 Catholic, 208 Mormon, 1.6%. Orthodox Christian, 0.5%. And then Jehovah's Witnesses, 0.8%. Okay? So then you have other denominations of Christians. And um, in our country, that's at least 200 other uh, denominations. So she's decided she speaks for all of you. So I hope that you're comfortable with that. Okay, then we move on to non-Christian faiths. Uh, Jewish, 1.9%. Muslim, 0.9%. Buddhist, 0.7%. Hindu, 0.7%. And other world religions, 0.3. And then, let's not forget, unaffiliated and atheist, agnostic, nothing in particular. That's 22.8%. So we're talking about close to 25% of the country either doesn't identify with any religion, doesn't believe in religion, or is an atheist. So, okay. Now, I'm going to try to skip over the logistic parts of why her idea is complete nonsense, because this has been dealt with very well by people who've discussed this over the last few days. Like, I'm sure you've heard about it. So number one, um, how would it do, be done? We, we aren't fighting a civil war like in the 1860s. There isn't a North and a South. So, you know, you're going to have states that are half and half. You're going to have states that um, the legislature is Republican, but the majority of the people are Democrats. Maybe a governor is Republican, but the, the other representatives are Democrats. So it really wouldn't work. Um, so again, I'm not going to go into that. Um, mass movements, how would that work? It would take time. Some people can't afford to move. Some people don't want to move. Their family's there. So it, it's just... This doesn't make sense, but it's been covered very well and very fully. So what I will do is put down in the description below a couple of the independent news sources that I go to, and I'll tell you why. Because not only Fox and Newsmax, who are represented by the far right and the uh, huge conglomerate com uh, companies and... Uh, the same thing goes for established Democrats, like on CNN. It's, this is all beholden to shareholders and to big money. So this is all slanted. I will look at the clips from there, and I will break them down and decide what my views are on it. But then I go to independent news sources, and I go to news sources outside of the country, the BBC, I go to NPR... And then I go to independent channels that I enjoy, which again, I will put down into links into the comment, uh, I'm sorry, into the description. But there are people, uh, commentators who are basically not beholding to anyone. They run their own, um, their own news network or a group of people do, and they're not getting paid by corporate donors. All right, so again, I'll put those down below. And what we have here... <laughs> And obviously a failure to communicate, but um, is the Dunning-Kruger effect, Dunning effect at its worst? All right. Now, if you're not familiar with it, this is when, to, in simple terms, when people who are not as intelligent as they believe themselves to be actually believe the opposite, and they just completely cannot understand that there are other points of view and that their view may be skewed or incorrect and they just don't want to believe it. I unfortunately know many people like this and this is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now the difference is with her, she is an elected official and she is talking about sedition. She's talking about civil war. She is talking about being a traitor. That's why before I found it funny that I'm not a Democrat or a Republican, but yes, I, I, my progressive values do go towards that direction more. And she has the gall to call the Democrats 
they may be a lot of things, but I don't see them as traitorous. I, I don't see them trying to overthrow the government. So just her past behavior, it's ridiculous. But my point here about the Dunning-Kruger effect and her stupidity is that I've gone back and forth with her over a great deal of time now. And at first I thought, wow, what an idiot. I still think she's an idiot, by the way. Of course she is. <laughs> yeah, I know you do too. At any point, uh, at any rate, I do, but I also think that she does suffer from this effect, and I think she does believe the things that she says. I, at one time, I wasn't quite sure, but I don't think she has the ability, the ability to have critical thinking skills or to be able to say, oh, okay, wait, what about other people's points of view? Now, I know that she and the people who identify with her don't care. They just, this is our way, and you need to be doing it our way or else. But this does not allow her to think of what it is like for, say, a Buddhist. And I'm going to, there's a reason I'm bringing up Buddhism. Um, what, what would they feel like if they were living in a country where your, your rights are in the Constitution, your rights are protected. You can be a Buddhist. You could be a Christian. It doesn't matter that Christians are in the minor, uh, majority. And you can, do, you can practice your religion how and when you want to. Or no religion whatsoever. So uh, let me pause right there. All right. So back to the topic. Um, the reason I wanted to talk specifically about Buddhism uh, in 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 relation to what is going on here is that I had a personal experience of someone who definitely suffers suffered from the Dunning Kruger effect. So I'm going to try to make this a quick aside. So I live in rural Connecticut. Now, the usual response from people initially when they're not from Connecticut or anywhere near here, they hear Connecticut and they think, oh, you must have money. That is definitely not the case. Um, Connecticut, for its small size, is very diverse as far as financially. There are areas that are extremely wealthy, and there are areas that are extremely poor. And um, that's there's a huge range, and then rural and urban is very, very different too. So uh, to get where I'm going with this, I uh, was working in a retail establishment in a very small town, <clears throat> rather conservative small town. And uh, I had, uh, okay, so what happened was several years ago, uh, there was a church. I don't remember what denomination it was, but it was definitely Christian. Might have been a Catholic church. And they moved out. They moved out. And it actually, the building was, this is of no consequence, but the building was just kind of like a warehouse, not a, not a very uh, aesthetically pleasing church, like, uh, you know, it was no Notre Dame, let's say that. So they moved, and uh, a Buddhist temple took over the property and actually improved it greatly over the years and built some really beautiful structures in back and whatever. So that there, this is when they moved in. So this woman came into the store to uh, purchase whatever it was she was going to get, and uh, she's like, what do you think about them down there? We're going to have to worry now. I, I said, about what? What are we talking about? It's like, well, you know, the Islamics. <sighs> and I was like, oh boy. Oh boy. So I said, oh, I think you mean the Buddhist temple down the street, you mean. And she got very confused look on her face. Took a little bit of a time. I think the wheels were trying to turn. Oh, are you Buddha? Yeah. He said, yes, I am Buddha. I am the divine one, and I am going to show you nirvana. I said, no, I'm not a Buddhist. I said, but the people down the road are Buddhists. I said, that's, that's what it is. Well, either way, you know, I don't want any of them around here. Or something to that effect. And, you know, obviously... The woman did not understand 
the difference between Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Sikhs. I mean, it, it just, you could just tell. And, and of course, there was also the suggestion there. What she did mean is that it was a Muslim group of people and, and moved in there to, to uh, you know, worship. So that's what she was afraid of. Now, I, I think I tried to say something more about, you know, Buddhists are probably the last people that you really need to worry about. If, if Now, I mean that from the religious sense, uh, you know, Buddhists like anyone else, they're good and bad. I just, I hope everybody gets that. But it, it just, this is what I mean. I mean, when you are wantonly ignorant and you don't have any desire to change that at all, it's really bad. I mean, that, that was really sad for the Buddhists moving in there and for that woman because she just doesn't understand anything about it and, and goes into it with fear and hatred. So now you bring this up to Marjorie Taylor Greene. And, and as I said, I mean, she's speaking to a lot of people. She has an audience that unfortunately, uh, they, they do suffer from this idea and this ideology that they, they don't want to know about anything else. It's just like, that's what it is. And I accept that. Well, you know, you, you do, there, there, there doesn't seem to be any consequences these days for the actions of people in political parties who do really horrendous things and incite people to violence, get people killed, uh, you know, basically put out all kinds of false rhetoric about, um, you know, the pandemic and, and many things. You, you get where I'm going with this. I mean, there, there needs to be some consequences for this. And what I hope people understand is that this is not someone fighting for freedom. I, you can cite leftists as much as you want. I don't see a growing, active leftist, uh, um, uh, leftist uh, you know, movement in this country that is trying to take over, uh, seditiously take, get rid of our government or anything of that nature. Where you're seeing that is with fascist behavior like this. I mean, telling everyone that if you're not Christian, then you don't have the same rights as me. If you're not whatever, it doesn't matter. You can fill in the blank. So as far as Marjorie, yeah, you, you, you are in the majority of Christians, but you can't just decide that you're in charge when there is... In, in this nonsense that her ex-friend Lauren Boebert or Lauren Boebert or however she wants it pronounced, the, the First Amendment is clear. It isn't unclear. There's no, there's no, no, oh, that's not what it means. It is what it means. It is what it means. It, it's, it's very, very clear. You do not need to be a religious scholar, okay? Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. That's the part I'm getting at, but comma, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So, yes, you're, you have every right to pro, um, do any religion that you want, Christianity or otherwise. You can practice it in our country without being told that you can't. But... There can be no law that establishes it as a national religion. And this is what she's going for. This is what she's trying to do. And that's why there's a separation. It's very simple. It, there is no confusion no matter what she says. And I, I, I just can't believe that people are at a point where really you, you think dissolving our country which here's the point that I haven't quite seen brought up yet. Let's just imagine that somehow this took place. Do you know how dangerous that would be for all of us as a whole? Because all of our enemies around the world, China and Russia and Iran and North Korea and so on, would say, wow, this is the time to strike. They can't even get along themselves. So I mean, I'm sure someone touched on that, but that's what bothers me. I mean, think about it. You, 
I, I, I'm not that worried about what a small segment of the population is uh, going on about as far as, you know, that they get all of the, the media focuses on a very small thing with turning wokeism into something negative and that, you know, they're grooming and stuff. I don't even want to get on that subject in this video because it, it's nonsense. It's complete nonsense. The people, in the fact, the biggest majority of people who are child molesters and whatnot are white, straight males and clergy. So let's just leave that alone. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it there because the whole idea is preposterous and it's, it's just nothing that should even be given any ground. And as the days have gone by, I've noticed that she's allowed to speak like this. And I don't know, I do believe there would have been a time when, okay, open sedition against the United States by a member of Congress I would think that there, that would be prosecutable. So I, I don't get it. So what I'd like to say is, on a better note, I hope everyone is having a great Thursday. Um, let's try to stick together no matter what our differences are. I do believe that can be achieved. I hope that can still be achieved. And um, have a great evening. Be kind to one another whenever you can, which is almost all the time, including yourself. And above all, be kind to animals. We are their voice. We speak for them. They don't have anyone else to, to protect them. And they give us so, so much without asking for anything. With that, I'll say good night and peace. Okay, I I know Basil wasn't responsible, so weren't you supposed to send out the invitations for for the party? I sent them out, one for you and one for Basil. Yeah, I I got the invitation for me, and I found the one. Or Basil, but I thought that was kind of a joke. So, did you send out the invitations or not? Because I feel kind of stupid here, basically. I don't know anyone except for you and Basil. Ah, <laughs> all right then. Well, um, I guess the party's over. <laughs>